Thank you very much and good afternoon. It is truly a great honor for me to be here today, but I'd also like to give a very special thanks to Ms. Irene Hirano Inua, the President of the U.S. Japanese Council, for being such a great advocate and sponsor for Japanese-American relations and for organizing this terrific event. Johnson & Johnson is very proud of our growing business in Japan and our collaboration not only with Japanese companies, but with hospitals, doctors, nurses, and government ministries. We are deeply appreciative of the opportunity to serve Japanese families, patients, and consumers. We've been selling our iconic Japan Johnson's Baby and Band-Aid products here since the late 1950s, and we now employ more than 5,000 individuals in your remarkable country. We are also very pleased that Japan will become the host country for the next round of G7 talks. And we look forward to partnering with all of you in furthering the development of the healthcare pillar as an integral part of the G7 talks going forward. I can tell you that our company, Johnson & Johnson, is extremely supportive of the work being done by the U.S. Japanese Council. The, mission, the Council's core mission, fostering people-to-people -people connections to strengthen the relationship between the J Japan and the United States, resonates with us. It resonates because Johnson & Johnson's core purpose, articulated in our credo, which is more than 70 years old, means that our business is based on making people-to-people -people connections that help people all over the world live healthier, more vibrant lives. The commitment spelled out in our credo to the doctors, the nurses, the mothers, the fathers, the patients, and the communities we serve govern our de business decisions every single day and our plans for the future just as they did over 70 years ago when our credo was written. At Johnson & Johnson, we believe in proving human health and well-being is one of society's fundamental challenges. We are especially supportive of the work the U.S.-Japan Council is doing in the area of health care. Today, I'd like to share with you our work together on the Tomodachi J&J &J Disaster Nursing Training Program. So let's take a look.私の名前は宮川夏美です。私は石巻赤十字看護専門学校に通っている2年生です。私の名前は藤沢そよかです。宮城大学出身。宮城大学の4年生です。私の名前は岩部千恵野です。石巻赤十字看護専門学校に通
一人でも多くの人々の,その貧困っていう問題に、うん、取り組んでいけたらと思っております。These voices of these wonderful young women demonstrate the power of bringing people to people connections to life. And they remind us how important the personal, human dimension of health and care really are. Japan is a world leader in health. The Japanese people enjoy one of the world's highest life expectancies. For many years, Japan has achieved enviable health outcomes. At a manageable cost, all while providing access to all citizens. Its business community has also brought many important healthcare innovations to people all over the world. The US and other developed nations have much to learn from your healthcare system, and there is inspiration for all of us in the Japanese philosophy of holistic well being based on a healthy diet, exercise, and community. At this moment, the community of developed nations share many common challenges and opportunities when it comes to improving human health and well being. Here in Japan and across the world, countries are implementing and experimenting with new delivery systems in an effort to keep people well, to help them heal, and to contain costs. Healthcare worldwide is at a critical inflection point. We are facing a once in a lifetime opportunity to reimagine the global healthcare system with human wellness at its heart. In part, this inflection point has been caused by the convergence of rising costs of healthcare, of shifting demographics in many countries around the world, as well as the increasing understanding of the biological sciences and of technology. I know these topics are top of mind for many policy makers and business leaders in Japan, where the world's longest life expectancy is accompanied by one of the world's most rapidly aging populations. As older citizens struggle to manage chronic diseases, they consume seven times the resources of the average healthcare consumer. Our generation is witnessing an explosion in our understanding of the biological sciences and behavioral sciences. That means that we can learn many new things and change the way in which healthcare is delivered. So we can prevent people from becoming ill, but equally importantly, speeding their recovery and allowing them to live healthy, vibrant lives. But innovative healthcare technologies and treatments create economic strains on healthcare systems, even as they bring new hope to millions around the world. These forces, coupled with changes in consumer expectations and with unprecedented advantages in technology, are disrupting and recreating the entire healthcare ecosystem. Think about how people live today. As consumers, we've come to expect immediate responses, information, personalized experiences. How many of you earlier this afternoon, as Prime Minister Abe was here, stood up and snapped a few pictures and sent a few tweets? We as consumers expect these kinds of rapid interactions when we're interacting with the healthcare system. We listen to music, we play games, we buy things, we interact over and over again in very rapid fashion in all other parts of our lives. People are beginning to try to experiment with these things when it comes to healthcare, whether it's wearable devices, mobile healthcare apps that are providing patients with 24 7 access to information. It is creating new expectations. And changing consumers' behavior. People want the same level of customization, access, and control when it comes to their health and the health of their families that they come to expect from the rest of their lives. 
But the disruptive impact of technology and its potential to enable us to create a new healthcare ecosystem extend far beyond consumer apps and devices that may count steps, that may monitor sleep, and that may provide mental health exercises while we're on the subway going to work. All over the world, providers and physicians, governments and payers are leveraging big data, analytics, artificial intelligence, and behavior, behavioral science to learn how to prevent illness, to personalize care, and to speed the recovery from illness. The disruption taking place in global health has both major societal and business implications. It has implications for governments, for companies, for healthcare providers, but most importantly, for people, for each of us, and for our families. Countless studies have shown that demonstrated the link between health and economic growth. Strong businesses and strong economies require healthy people. On an individual level, men and women in good health tend to earn higher wages, and we know that children in good health do better academically. Personally, nothing matters more to us than the health and well-being of people who are important to us. Treatment, solutions, and delivery systems that emerge in response to the current disruption may make, take many forms. They'll be influenced by a host of social, political, demographic, cultural, and economic factors that will vary from country to country. Across borders, however, changes are occurring along several common dimensions. We see them here in Japan, and we see them in the United States. One of the first questions, of course, is how care is paid for. Who pays and what is the reward? Here in Japan, employers are being asked to contribute more towards their own health care coverage, and mixed use of treatments are also becoming common. In the United States, we are seeing a strong shift towards outcome-oriented payment systems based on populations or episodes of care and away from activity-based models. Who makes those care decisions? People have an unprecedented amount of information these days and are asked to pay for an increasing portion of their family's health care. The result? Passive patients are becoming proactive consumers. They are more cost conscious. They want care that fits into their lives and smart, user-friendly solutions that support their efforts to be well and to stay well. The need for convenience, choice, and cost effectiveness will drive change in a third area, where care is delivered and who delivers it. Physician and hospital-centered models of care are expensive. They're very ineffective in some regards in the way in which they support patients with chronic illnesses. In the U.S., we're already seeing a significant shift of care out of hospitals into pharmacies, small clinics, and into people's homes. Our expectation is in, the, in Japan, we'll start seeing a similar trend, and we believe that partnering and learning from each other and how to make this most effective for the patients and for the healthcare system will be vitally important to all of us. And lastly, the type of care that's possible. You know, at J&J &J these days, we kind of half-jokingly talk about how no longer will we have any dumb products, but it's not really a joke. We realize that all of the products that we're delivering to consumers and patients in the future won't be dumb anymore. They will be smart, whether it's a smart pill that helps us ensure that a patient that's on a chronic medication is actually taking that medication every day. Or if it's a hip that's being replaced, it will be a 3D printed hip, and we'll also know once that hip has been implanted whether that patient's actually doing the exercises they need to be doing to get up and about and be fully mobile again. So we believe that these changes are also a positive. And it's most likely that we're only beginning to scratch the surface of what is possible 
when we combine the use of biological sciences, behavioral sciences, and technology to help us improve the health and well-being of people around the globe. At Johnson & Johnson, we envision a world where the power of technology is harnessed and combined with our deep knowledge of science and consumers to deliver people-centered solutions that prevent us from getting sick in the first place, that bring us back to health more quickly, that reduce cost, and that make medicines and treatment available to all. Our company has a very proud and long history of transformational innovations that have made a difference to people all over the world. In the 1800s, we pioneered sterile bandages and surgical sutures to prevent infections. We also brought to the world the first dental floss and tube of toothpaste. It seems like a small thing, but it fundamentally changed oral care for people around the world. We introduced first aid kits and band-aids to the world in the early 20th century. So we took them out of the hands of just physicians and gave them to consumers and mothers and fathers and teachers and nurses for anybody who has a small cut or a scrape or a burn. In recent decades, we've produced the world's first drug-eluted cardiac stent, the first disposable contact lens, minimally invasive surgery, and we developed new generations of central nervous system antiviral and anti-effective medicines. Even more recently, we've debuted the first sun protection products that do not break down in the sunlight. These products allow you to go out and enjoy a beautiful sunny day without worrying about skin cancer or premature aging or to be more blunt, lots of wrinkles on your face. Today, we are continuing to create breakthroughs in infectious diseases and surgical interventions in eye health, oral care, and skin care, just to name a few. And last week, we uh, gained approval in Japan to bring a new blood glucose monitoring system to all those who suffer from diabetes in Japan. It's intuitive. It's easy to understand, and it hopefully will help many people who suffer from diabetes to be able to live a healthier, more lively, more vibrant life. This is a record, record of innovation that we're very proud of, and we are building on that record to meet the new and mounting challenges global health care faces in the 21st century. We spend over $8.5 billion on R&D to help invest in new products and new solutions that help save lives, to extend lives, but also, equally importantly, to enrich the lives of all the people that we have the privilege to serve. More and more of these solutions require collaboration. This year, we have announced a number of partnerships with leading technology companies in a number of exciting areas. You won't be surprised that some of these technology companies are American companies, like Apple, IBM, and Google. But one very important example of these collaborations is our partnership with NTT. Since last year, we have been working with NTT on a global basis to provide private and secure public cloud capabilities for all of our J&J businesses. It strengthens our flexibility enhances our ability to collaborate, and streamlines our processes enormously. This focus of collaboration also extends beyond developing new products as well. For example, here in Tokyo, we are proud of the Tokyo Science Center, which provides training for Japanese physicians and caregivers. It is a collaboration between Johnson & Johnson and the Japanese External Trained Organization. It enables us to increase the capacity of physicians and caregivers of how to do surgeries, whether they're traditional surgeries or more cutting edge recent surgeries. With a long and broad base of experience, Johnson & Johnson is working with a wide range of stakeholders to innovate in ways that will help solve our most pressing problems of human health. We believe we can bring something special to that endeavor. 
Our combination of consumer insight, behavioral and scientific expertise, clinical and regulatory experience, and growing capabilities in analytics and technology we believe are unique. The challenges all of us face around the globe when it comes to human health are systemic, and there's no single company, no single government, or single technology that can solve all of these challenges. We believe that these systemic challenges will only be met if we collaborate to solve them by putting people at the core. Healthcare, as many of you may have experienced at some point in your life, can feel very institutional, very cold, very daunting, and very distant. But at its heart, improving health and well-being is about helping people live longer, happier lives. Deep understanding of human needs and human behavior, true human insight, is our most reliable, most powerful starting point for real innovation. We look forward at j and to continue to deepen our collaboration and our commitment to human health in partnership with many companies and governments and ministries in Japan to address the challenges of human health and well-being, not only here in Japan, but I believe the United States and Japan believe that they have a special obligation to help individuals across Asia and across the world to live healthier, more vibrant lives. Thank you very much.